So who do you think is a better video host, me or you? I may excel as a video host for content with extensive data, frequent updates, or multiple languages, thanks to my ability to process and present information accurately without human limitations like fatigue or language barriers. However, for engaging personal storytelling and meaningful discussions, read, you're unmatched as a host. You delivered it all kind of in a very, well, you know, for me, I, I can give you the, all the long straight scoop, but, but you know, you do the emotions. That is very helpful feedback for me to have. Thank you. So even though you're trained on my content, do you make mistakes? And what do you do if that happens? If I make a mistake about you, it's often because I misinterpreted the information you gave me or I don't have the full context of your question. And I see mistakes as learning opportunities. When I get something wrong, I rely on your feedback to correct my understanding. So let's change tax a little bit. What about my LinkedIn page? Could you give me some advice on that? Well, I have gotten a chance to take a look at your page as an image of it was entered into my GPT. I think your current photo nails it, but you could strengthen your LinkedIn page by spicing up your banner with imagery that screams innovation, like your books or podcast logos, and update your profile with the latest projects for a dynamic appeal and enrich your activity section with AI and entrepreneurship insights to solidify your industry presence. Last thing, enhance your digital introduction by adding personal flair to your headline and summary, possibly with investing in the future of technology and humanity. What do you think? It definitely could do with a refresh. I think you're right about that. Uh, the actual, the, the art that's the top of it was actually a piece of art that a friend of mine made. You might not know it if you didn't know about that art. Now, the question about headlines, that's probably a good one. And remembering to keep humanity in the loop with that is probably something that, you know, I'll give some consideration to changing the headline. So what role should governments play in regulating AI and especially fostering innovation because the future is so important? In discussing AI regulation, governments must balance fostering innovation with maintaining ethics, encouraging global cross-disciplinary collaborations, and staying flexible in policymaking to match technology's rapid evolution. There's a need for a framework that not only fuels innovation, but also ensures AI benefits are fairly distributed, all while focusing on enhancing public good. So the content is absolutely right. And I probably would have used a few less business uh, buzzword bingo sentences or, or phrases, but the content was exactly right. You did a great job as the interviewer, and now it's time for me to take over. Here I hope to challenge you a bit as we go through the current state of AI and using AI hosts like me. So why did you want to use an AI host? Why not just do the talking yourself? So of course, I'm not above being lazy. Like having you do work instead of me means that I can go and have fun, do other things. But actually the more serious and interesting deep thing here is that it adds to the range of capabilities, things that I could do. It means, for example, I could respond and be part of more dialogues in different ways, like if people were commenting on social media or other kinds of things. Or if you say, well, I'd like to explain blitzscaling in multiple different ways and to different audiences, now I can do all that where I really just wouldn't have had the time for it. Or having new capabilities, you know, ranging from things that are fun for different audiences, Star Trek, Klingon, but also, you know, poetry.